This conference will now be recorded. Good afternoon, everyone. Sorry, I was last minute here getting on. Uh, okay, uh, I'd like to call the Stratford Housing Partnership meeting of October 19th to order at 12.01 uh, p.m. Uh, Eileen, we're not expecting anyone else, I don't think, today, right? No, um, Laura is going to be, Laura was a no. Yeah. Beth DePonte was maybe late because her 11 o'clock meeting started late. And I've never, ever heard from Christopher Blake ever, so. Okay. Okay, no problem. Um, okay, uh, meeting minutes, approval of meeting minutes from our August meeting. Do we have a motion to approve those? I'll make a motion. Second it. Okay, great. Thank you. Okay. Um, so next on the agenda is a consultant update. Susmita, do you want to take this one? Sure. Um, um, I regret to inform you that Glenn is no longer going to be with us as part of this team because um, Glenn sent an email um, to me and um, also I forwarded it to the mayor and everybody else like in the administration um, saying that um, you know he doesn't foresee him taking on this role for the next year because of his um, you know partially because of his other responsibilities um, and um, he wants to probably lessen his workload right now um, and also the fact that you know we don't have any actionable items right away to impact upon uh, so he's also picking and choosing his priorities right now um, with that said um, now we are orphans consultant less <laughs> So we have to um, figure out our workload going forward and how we would like to, you know, what we want to do for next year, how we want to do it, and um, who should we ask for help. These are the three things that we have to figure out as a group, I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, I agree. I was disappointed to hear that Glenn uh, wouldn't be continuing with us because I think he's been very valuable. Uh, up until this point, but I get it. He's, uh, you know, he's got a lot of things on his plate, and you know, we're not really ready to pull the trigger on anything or, you know, uh, do anything right now. So, um, I, the mayor had mentioned to me the potentially uh, Peter Wood uh, coming on, uh, so we can talk about that. Um, we had discussed him a little bit in the last meeting, uh, he was going to potentially come and present about uh, when we had our 8-30G discussion. Um, I think um, if I may interrupt, Mary and the mayor uh, have met with him. So Mary, do you have anything to add? Yeah, we did talk to him and we did get his um, his bio. So I can forward that to everyone. And we just thought he might be a good fit with his knowledge as we move forward in the next stages like of, of the housing partnership um, because of his knowledge of the market and how it works and what's been done. Um, so why don't I forward the, uh, I'll forward it to um, Aileen the the bio and then she could forward it to everyone is that you want to do it that way okay yeah. and, then, and then we can talk about maybe um at the next meeting when the mayor's here in attendance because i know she had a conflict today we can discuss you know our next steps with that does that sound like a good plan yeah yeah i think that's a great idea thank you um, yeah, so any other comments or thoughts on that before we? Just one comment about the uh, ADU uh, letter that we got. Um, zoning has forwarded to our our consultants under zoning. So they're they're taking that um, there's like five points, six points that they're taking that in, into consideration as they start to work on that uh, in 
particular they're looking at it in terms of current state law how things have changed and if that changes what we're what we're if we need to have information so eventually they will report back to us with uh with that section pulled pulled out it's going right. to take a couple months though from what i can see okay that's great though thank you thank you for that update i'm glad it's in the right hands now uh, anyone else any other comments on on the ADU or the consultant update, anything like, okay. Okay, so then along the lines of that, we kind of have to decide or discuss kind of what are, what are our next steps for this group? What are we focusing on um, going forward? And then I think what also ties into that is our meeting schedule for, for next year. So, you know, we still have um, some things that you know, we should be digging into and looking at, but there's no like in, imminent deadlines or anything that we're trying to meet like with the POCD or anything like that. So, um, you know, the the 8-30G uh, work and, you know, how can we reach our uh, affordable housing numbers that uh, we're striving for, you know, we need to continue to have discussions around that. Um, we had asked Glenn to get some information on um, inclusionary uh, housing, uh, which we'll have to decide, you know, what we, if we want to ask a new consultant to do that or how we want to dig into that one. Um, any other, Sismitha, any other topics you think we need to keep on the agenda? Yeah, um, so you pretty much summarized everything I wrote to you on um, September 19th. Uh, Jen and I were discussing this on how to put uh, agenda items together and how often we should be meeting as a group now so, because we don't have any immediate actionable items on the table. Um, the first thing is, um, does this partnership uh, want to get to the exempt status or not? Uh, and exempt status of 8-30G, which means that we need 400 uh, additional credits in order to become an exempt community by state law, which gives us more control over, you know, saying no to a developer who puts an A-30G housing uh, development in the middle of nowhere. Um, and, you know, we can't deny it right now because we are tight, because uh, our hands are tied because we are not at that 10% threshold. But if we get 400 more credits, we, we can get to an exempt status, which also ties us back into that ADU discussion and the incentive housing zone discussion, I had a brief conversation with Jay and asked, um, you know, we have a zoning consultant already, would he be able to give us an overview of how an incentive housing zone uh, would work in Stratford? Um, and based on my discussion, I think it's a long road for us to get there with this consultant because he is looking at every single piece of zoning reg comprehensively. So he won't be just working on this piece alone which means that it's not an actionable item until another four or five months at least. And in these four or five months, we will still be getting application developers on a dash 30 Gs that we can't say no to, and we have to fight the fight like we've always been. I mean, I'm not saying that every a dash 30 G application is bad, but there are some that are, you know, triggering these environmental concerns in areas that they're not suited for and the densities that are proposed in floodplains sometimes. So I, you know, there's no way out unless as a community Stratford thinks about how to get to that exempt status. The second item like is how often should we meet? Should we meet every month because we don't have anything immediate or should we meet every three months or four months um, and, you know, do some homework and come back to the meeting uh, every three or four months. Um, and then um, I think Peter Wood is one item that Mary touched upon, uh, who would be helping us with giving us an overview of how Stratford's market is right now. Are we in a place to actually demand developers to set aside 10 or 20% of their new housing stock to become affordable? Um, or you know, are we shooting ourselves when we are saying that to the developer because he has other options. He can go to Trumbull, he can go to Shelton, and he doesn't really have to be in Stratford if Stratford's forcing him um, to give um, or set aside uh, affordable housing. 
So that's a discussion we should be having with Peter Wood. Um, I think that's about it. Okay. So let's talk about um, meeting frequency. So um, I, I think the, the idea of scheduling meetings quarterly, um, mm -hmm. and then if we have a pressing topic to discuss in between, we could certainly have a special meeting or, or communicate via email. Uh, might be wise for now, just given what's on on the agenda, but I wanted all of your thoughts on that. I don't want us to kind of lose momentum by only meeting quarterly, but I'm not sure that there's kind of actionable things for us to be talking about each month. Desmond? Yeah, so uh, yeah, I had, a, I had some thoughts on that. Um, so uh, when we uh, when we kicked off this, um, I know we started with the, uh, the 8-30 um, initiative, but I, I've been thinking about this a lot more. If our charter is broad in such a way that um, it affords us the opportunity to collaborate with other, I don't know, other departments. I'm not a municipal, so I don't know if they're departments or initiatives that intersect with housing that we can um, we can get brought in to. Um, you know, then. You know, if we have those opportunities um, and they kind of shape our long-term or one-year, two-year um, objectives, and then we can have other things that come on on a, you know, quarterly base that, that kind of keeps us going. I'm just trying to think um, how we kind of structure the year ahead and then kind of give ourselves opportunity to be flexible as things, other programs and objectives and 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 projects come about that intersect with our housing mandate, our housing charter. Um, I don't know, I said a lot there, you know. Yeah, anyone have any comments on any of that, Sismita? Um, I think we can always call in a special meeting. Um, if, it, if we were to just schedule our regular meetings every three months, but we notice that there's something very pressing that we have to discuss then somebody can reach out to me or Aileen and then we can put it out there before the group and say, hey, we want to call in a special meeting. Uh, I know our meeting is not until three months away, but can we meet like in a month from now and take everybody's availability and you know schedule that way. So I, I think that way we can be flexible. Yeah. Mary has something. Yeah, so I know that you know the next um, zoning rewrite regulation meeting is going to be um, a really meaty um, because it'll be people reviewing what um, what's been put together and and the plans are you can answer better than I can Smith I think for like February or March a round table might we want to meet prior to that in case as a group, we want to provide feedback prior to any roundtable meetings. So like maybe we should meet in early February. I don't know, and you know better than, than I do, Sasmitha, but that's just a suggestion. If I can add my voice to Mary's comment, I think that's absolutely critical. It will help the people that are doing the rewrite. Um, they need all the clarity that they can get. Um, I think we Is can... Is that too late? Is early February too late, Sismitha? Okay. I think it's fine. So we have our yearly calendar schedule set until December. For next year, uh, we can have an um, organizational meeting in January and then a regular meeting in February and then from then on every three months if we want to do that way. What do you think, yeah, so, so stick with the November and December dates that we already have on the calendar for 23, and then meet in January <coughs> to kind of kick off the year. Is that what you said? Sorry, I, I lost yeah, the first Yeah, or we can meet directly in February too. We don't have to meet in January. So we can do February, and then we can do every uh, three months from then. So March, April, then we meet in May, and again, June, July, August, you know, we meet in September, and then we meet in December. So we'll have four meetings. I think. Uh, so, Smitha, what what about the um, 
the PLCD or uh, the whole effort that we did with Glenn and moving the ball forward on some of those things that we've worked on are those kind of done done or are they are there additional like efforts that we need as a group to to work on to to get those to the goal line um the PLCD was adopted um, by planning commission on september 19th and Canton council on october 10th so it's a done document but there are many recommendations in that that should be pushed forward, um, but they can only be pushed forward through zoning regs. So we are going to look at every piece of zoning reg that's rewritten and compare it with our recommendations from our housing and land use chapters. In fact, most of the other chapters also have some zoning recommendations, but you know, you guys are mostly tasked with housing and land use. So you can look at density related recommendations and zoning regs housing related recommendations and zone, new zoning regs and see and compare is this what the community wanted is this what we're going to get uh, in a new zoning reg three right mm -hmm. and desmond that they the consultants have taken all of the red the red letter box um suggestions from the pocd i know in terms of zoning they've taken those suggestions and they're working on what can they do in terms of the rewrite to fulfill some of those questions. So there's gonna be a lot of information coming forward. Yeah, so I think, you know, I think everyone is right that it's critical for us to, to meet before uh, the zoning round table and stay really connected to all of those rewrites because that's how we're gonna drive our, our um, initiatives forward. But I, I do think we can do that on a, a, a quarterly, meeting schedule basis if everybody's willing to sort of you know read things and and do some homework in between those meetings and provide input and um you know kind of interact via email or have a special meeting <coughs> as needed i think it'll i think it'll work um you know we we schedule for an hour if we're switching to quarterly should we schedule for a longer period of time a different time of day i i, I don't really have a an opinion one way or another. I just wanted to kind of throw that out there since we're not meeting as regularly. Well, Jen, I, I think we still can do it in an hour. Um, okay. To be efficient, we can do the same time. But I can also tell you that we won't be able to finish reviewing all the zoning regs in one meeting. So we may need like Feb and March, maybe, of two meetings. So people can digest, go back, do their homework, review, read again, come back. Um, I am just um, foreseeing this as a more regular uh, session in the first part of the year compared to the second part of the year. But uh, we can always call in a special meeting. So if, if folks need more time, if they say, okay, February, we got the stuff, we reviewed it, but we need more time to chew on this, we'll come back in April, we can call in a special meeting at that time. I, I like that approach. Um you know, that we have a set cadence and then depending on kind of workload, <laughs> then we can have special meetings to kind of work through whatever we have in front of us. Yeah, but the only tough part is for Aileen to get the quorum for special meetings. It is a very d difficult task because people don't respond by emails sometimes. And then we're hanging in there trying to hear back who's going to come so we if we have a special meeting and the dates won't work for all so we need a lot of cooperation from the group if we want to schedule special meet special meetings as needed yes elizabeth i agree with what susmita just said about the special meetings so couldn't we just leave the schedule for the 2024 meetings as um you attached and simply cancel if they're not needed if you can do that too. I mean, it's up to Jen what she wants to do. Yeah, I mean, I guess it, you know, I think for the first part of the year, right, where it's clear we'll need to meet more often than just quarterly. Um, yeah, I, I'm okay. I'm okay with putting out a monthly schedule and then adjusting it. I, I think once we get through the zoning reg, uh, rewrites though i'm not sure that we need monthly so maybe we can 
adjust the schedule at that time or if we put it out there we have to cancel each month i'm not sure how it works yeah we can do like monthly in the first part of the year and then the second part of the year we can do every three months so we can do um we can leave out jan because we don't have anything in january anyway so we can do yep. february march even if you want we can do april and then cancel it if not needed and then from april we can do every three months so uh, may june you leave out july you meet and august september summertime you leave out october you meet and then one last meeting in december and that's it can you like do that, that. Mm -hmm. sure okay. yeah i think that works yeah. Eileen, can you update that schedule I'm okay, good so it sounded like you said no January. Yes, February, March, April. Yes for July, and yes for October. And then Susmita, for some reason, did you add November to that? September. Okay, so February, March, April, July in October. And December, six months. So we are having six meetings instead of 12 meetings. You want December 19th? Yeah, yeah. I mean, it may be canceled. If we, just in case, if we don't have a quorum for October, we still have to vote on the calendar. So we'll keep the do December wanna, meeting there. Do we mm -hmm. want to move it up in December, earlier in the month? Yeah. Not do the 19th, because I don't know. That we'll get a quorum on December 19th either. Uh, I'm just looking at the calendar. What if, if that's. We... Oh, go ahead. Oh, go ahead. So the third Thursday, that was based on the mayor's schedule for which, you know, the town clerk and for scheduling purposes and the paperwork that she needs to file with the state, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. If you want to go ahead with December, you're better off keeping with this December 19th. And then um, if for some reason that doesn't work or you can't vote on it in October, which is when you, you will be voting on the next year's schedule, you can always call a special meeting. Like okay. You can always say like December 1st, you know, like so not too close to Thanksgiving and not too close to Christmas. That's what my other committees do. That's why I, I present all this to my committees before Halloween, so that if there's no quorum in November and December, it's not for that, for the paperwork purposes, not a big deal. Okay. Do we need a, a motion to approve that or? Okay. Look. Yes. Harold, you make a motion? Like to make a motion that we approve the revised calendar. A second? Thank you. Okay, great. Thank you. Uh, okay, is there anything else anyone wanted to discuss today? Jennifer, just one other thing. I happened to look on the website because I had no idea when my term was up. And we do have people that are that are in January are being termed out. I don't. They, I'm sure that could be extended, but um, you might want to go over that with Laura. Okay. Yes. Thank you for pointing that out. I will review that, um, and we can discuss. Because that will affect our um, ability to get a quorum. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Good point, Harold. Thank you. Uh, anything else? No. So guys, this is my easiest meeting all day. I love it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank okay, you. Have a good one. I'll see you all in November. Don't you need a motion to adjourn? Oh yeah, I always forget that. A motion to adjourn. I never do. So. <laughs> all right. We have Harold and Elizabeth. Second. Elizabeth. Okay. I think we're good. Thank you. Thank you guys. Thank you. Good seeing everybody. Good seeing everybody. Bye.